Hey, it's Kendalee, the Gulf Coast baller, the Panhandle Pro from Pensacola, Florida. And we are back with another smoke screen exclusive like we always do at this time. You see who on the screen. This man really, he really needs no introduction. But we're going to do all of that because he is definitely worthy of it. Filmography, super long. You see him antagonizing you on the TV mm -hmm. screen and all the movies we've been watching. If you're on social media, y'all be tagging this man and bothering him. You already know who it is. The one and only Alfonso Settles. What's going on? Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. What's going on with you? Oh, man. Chilling definitely had to get you on the smoke screen, man, because you got a lot going on right now. And to just mm -hmm. start off, man, just tell the people, you know, where you're from and, you know, a little bit about your background, how you came up. Oh, man. Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, born in, yeah, I'm from the D, born and raised. Uh, you know, how I came into the game, man, I started back in like the end of 2016, going into 17. And um, I started with the modeling scene. So, you know, it was the runways, the print ads, the, the catwalk, stuff like that. And, um, you know, from there, I got my, my, my first opportunity to get in a film, which was called Ivan and the Art of Love. Uh, my uh -huh. people had actually... Uh, they actually had reached out to my people because I was a fit for one of the roles and uh, it was a background uh, featured extra role. So, you know, I was I was able to be seen, you know, pretty good. Uh, and I shared a scene with John Savage from The Godfather. Um, we had Cordon Blue from High School Musical. He was in that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from there, man, I just got bit with the acting bug being on set and, you know, just seeing how everything worked behind the camera the things that you don't see to help bring a particular film or, or tv show to life man and i got bit with that bug and i've been working ever since man oh, okay you got a model background i knew that's how you got that good posture you always <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you always show the squared up and look and look like you mean business oh yeah so, for um, sure i always have to ask man detroit it's it's like y'all are what it is when it comes to these independent movies, and that's not taking nothing away from any of the other cities that's moving out there, but the D, it was the Motor City. Now it's like movie city, bro. What, like, what's, do you have a break? What's going on up there? It seems like it's filming nonstop. Well, I mean, you know how I go, man. We, this is the Motor City, man. And, you know, we, we grind here. We work, we hustle, man. And, you know, the thing is, you know, everybody is, is trying to do film, you know, whether they're trying to jump in as an actor or a director or producer or whatever the case. But, you know, when I first started this journey, you know, I came in at a time where, you know, it wasn't really cool to be an actor. You know what I'm saying? If you told somebody you was an actor, it was like, uh, oh, OK, like if they haven't seen you on nothing mainstream or mm -hmm. if they haven't seen you, period, they just like, oh, OK, you're an actor. Or they, like they don't realize the seriousness, seriousness of it. But when they see you on TV and, and they see you on social media, and, you know, I've been blessed enough to, you know, make some news appearances and and just do a lot of different things on a lot of different levels. You know, people start to see and understand like this is this is a real thing. And over the years, you know, people see that 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 start to grow and then, you know, they want to be a part of it. So, you know, you have people jumping in the industry trying to put out, you know, quality products for the most part. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we lost our film incentive right around the time when I started. And, you know, just to let in you the in on a secret. Yeah, yeah, in the state yeah. of Michigan. Cause you know, they were filming a lot of a lot of big budget Hollywood films here, man. We had Transformers, you know, they did Batman versus Superman here, uh Need for Speed. So, you know, we had a lot of big budget films here, but when they took the film incentive away, and they gave it to Atlanta and a few other places. And you see what they what they did with the, with the incentive. So, you know, a lot of people here, you know, we were forced to just start making our own content and digging in our own pocket to do so. But, you know, once you know, once we got on Tubi, you know, that platform is, is has always been around since 2014 when I started uh, a couple of years before I started. But now, you know, nobody watched it. And, you know, the pandemic happened and everybody was forced to be at home. And, you know, they started paying attention to these movies, realizing that there's some good content out here. And it just helped us blow up even more. Hold on, because me, because King Wesley touched on that with the uh, film incentive. So mm -hmm. are you saying them taking the film incentive away kind of in a, in a, a involuntary way 
force people to be independent and kind of planted the seed for what we got going on now? Yeah, in a, in a sense, um, you know, because when we lost the film incentive, but we still wanted to do film. So it's like if we weren't going to be given the money, then we got to go out here. And, uh-huh. You know, Detroit, you know, we we going to hustle and grind, man. So, you know, we had to go out here and figure out a way and, and make it happen for, our, for ourselves. And when we did, and we started putting content out and people started seeing it like, wait a minute, like this movie was actually pretty good. This acting was was, was actually pretty good. What, what, what else they got going on? And it just was a domino effect. And, you know, like you say, in the Tubi groups, you know, it started off with, you know, not a whole lot of people, not a whole lot of interaction. And, you know, I went in there and just kind of started talking to people and things and, and it started growing and growing and growing. And now it's like over 200 and some odd thousand people in that group. Man, it was... When I joined, it was 110. So, uh, yeah, I think I was in there a little bit before that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been over a hundred thousand since mm-hmm. I joined. So man, they say it's all. They say you can ride around Detroit, and if you ride around long enough, you eventually gonna see a camera somewhere filming. Is that true? Is it just always filming? Yeah, going that's on? that's that's true. It's 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 always filming going. I I literally <laughs> was out in about about a month ago. And I bumped into uh, some of my people on set. They were using the house in, the, in a particular area to shoot a film, and I just was out riding. So that's 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 true. Like you can you can bump into something and see somebody with some camera set up, and, and they trying to get some content going. Yeah, man. I want to salute you, and I ain't even gonna start naming people, but it's about twenty or thirty of y'all. When people get new to that group or new to the independents, they be like, they're using the same actors and stuff, but. The fact of the matter is, you all are the creme de la creme of what's going on. So, like, I want to see y'all in this mm-hmm. stuff. Like, if I'm if I see a movie and I see certain names, even from the director standpoint, whether it's Dennis Reed or somebody, like, then I know, okay, this is gonna be good. Shoot, mm-hmm. I'd rather it be y'all who I know can act and give me a good job than you know somebody you know new. You know, no disrespect to because everybody got to get on. But what I'm saying yeah. is. I got faith in the people that uh I've grown to know out of the Detroit area. Mm-hmm. So uh, tell me this, because I say I, I want to try to. I know Dennis super busy. I want to get him on the show. What is it like working with him? Because he got a lot of stuff in his bag right now. Yeah, Dennis definitely got a lot going on. I mean, that's my guy. I mean, um, I just I just talked. I was just up at Homestead Entertainment. I was talking to him uh, a couple of weeks ago. But I mean, he cool. He, he cool. He good guy. Um, you know he. He want what he want. Um, you know, when we on set and we working, you know, we, we have fun and we do what we do, but we work, you know, and you want to make sure that uh, we get the best product out, you know, because it's a lot going on. It's a lot riding on that. So when, when we come on and we doing a, a homestead entertainment project, man, it got, it got to be right. It got to be dope. And that's why you see a lot of the same actors, because to be honest, like I said, you know, when I jumped in, man, it, it was we was I was coming in at a time where it wasn't popular to be an actor. So it was only a handful of us that was really wanting to do it. So we do one movie. OK, what's next? We got something else. OK, we, we do this. You know, we do this. We do that. Then you look up. We got a body of work behind us in a very short period of time, because, again, we jumped in when it wasn't popular. And once it started to grow and, and, and catch fire, then people wanted to be a part of that. Now, um, I do music as well. <clears throat> and. The state of music now, kind of like, basically, in entertainment period, it's like an independent thing going on where, like, you don't need a label. You can make money yourself independently, et cetera. Do mm-hmm. you? Now, of course, I know you and everybody else would love to have a co-star or head role in a big Hollywood film and win the Oscars. We don't. That's a given. But mm-hmm. do you think, is it pressure or is it a vibe from people to like want to be blown up because you all can make money and get the same exposure and everything <coughs> independently? Like, what's the vibe with people is in regards to that? Well, I mean, I think everybody want to make money. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I I think that's what what everybody wants to do. But you know, touching on that, I have to say this: I think that if you're getting into this, you know, to make a dollar or to get the uh, the fame and the notoriety, then this is not the industry for you. Okay. And, and I say that like with 1 million percent confidence because money and numbers are followed. The notoriety will come. But if that's your sole purpose and that's your goal, 
then once you attain that, then what's next? See what I'm saying? So when you when you get that, if you're fortunate enough to get it, you're gonna cheat the craft. It's just like when you get to the NBA. You play ball your whole life, you get drafted, you get a fat contract, you can take care of yourself in ways you never imagined. You could take care of your family, all your friends. You could do anything monetarily that you want to do. But after you get that bag, if you don't have a love for the craft and a love for the game to continue to grow and get better, then what's next? Mm-hmm. You'll be one of those those guys that get the bag and then he fall to the wayside and then that's it. Because everybody got talent is, is what you're going right. to do with it. Now, shoot, speaking of the NBA, man, you six five, six six. You ain't play no ball? Oh, yeah. I played some of my pro ball, man, all the way up until uh, my late 30s, man. Then I put it okay. down and I just got to a point where – you know, I was at a crossroads. Like I, don't, I, I, like I still was playing at a high level. I just wasn't having fun anymore. You know, the game was starting to change. You know, the game, of course, it's, it's a young man's game. It was getting younger. The three ball was really heavily mm-hmm. being incorporated. You know, I, mm-hmm. I come from an era where, man, you come down, you got to throw that thing down to the big man and let him work or get it out to the wings. But now, nah, man, everybody yep. crossing half court, they letting that boy go. And, you know, that ain't the style of play that I grew up on. And I just found myself as I got older in the game, I just wasn't having fun. So I just had to find something else, man. So for about a year or two, I just was at a crossroads like, damn, what am I going to do now? You know what I'm saying? I've been playing ball my whole life. I don't know, you know, and then this this acting modeling thing opened up a whole nother round for me, man. What were you playing at? Oh, man, I played semi-pro ball. So I, I bounced around for a lot of teams here. Uh, my last team was the, the uh, was the Talons. I think that was down in New Mexico, but man, that was a while back. That was like 2011, I believe. Uh-huh. And then I came back home and, and bounced around after I left from there, and then that was pretty much it. Okay, that's what's up. Now your filmography, man, is too long, which is <laughs> which is a good, <laughs> which is a good thing. And I've mm-hmm. seen and I've seen a lot of your movies, man. So I want to walk through. And uh, talk about some. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the chronological order thing from back and come up to recent. But ironically, Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, I just watched this the other day. Deceitful Passions. Okay. You played yeah. Seth. Mm-hmm. How was it uh doing this film? Oh man, um, I, I had a ball with that. You know, shout out to uh, Renika McQueen because that's her film. Uh, it was a book first, Deceitful yeah. Passions, and then they flipped it up into a movie man I, I had a good time with that that with that role and to be honest man that was my um that was my first lead you know i had a couple things out here under my belt but that was the first time you know being one of the leading characters in the film and you know quick story about that movie i really wasn't i had auditioned for that movie when they had auditions for it and i had auditioned for the role of tony okay and tony was the one that was you know he was killing everybody and um I, obviously i didn't get it and i didn't hear anything back I said, okay, no problem, you know, whatever. You audition, sometimes you don't hear nothing. So a couple months went past, and um, I get a call <clears throat> from my guy, uh, BZ Jones, which he was uh, one of the directors on the film, and he hit me up. He's like, yo, bro, what you doing this weekend? I need you. And I'm like, I don't really know. Like, you know, what, what's going on? He's like, man, I got a lead role for you, bro. I'm like, well, what is it? He's like, man, deceitful passes. I'm like, like, bro, I auditioned for that like months ago. I didn't hear nothing back. He like, yeah, man, some happiness in that wooty woop, man. Can you can you come tomorrow? When he called me, bro, it was like five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> he asking me to be all set for a lead role the next day at 10 a.m. And normally, bro, I when I take a role, I need time to prepare and get ready. Uh-huh. But at that time, you know, I hadn't had a lead under my belt yet. You know, I was, and I really had wanted to do the role. I wanted to do the film, so I agreed to do it. He sent me the script, man, and I was in that thing all night. So those opening scenes with me and Vito and, and, and the, in the yeah. car wash, yeah, I literally had just learned that 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 scene probably hours before that, bro. Like literally, wow. yeah, yeah. Well, that just shows the, your dedication and uh, to the craft and your artistry to be to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see. He played me. He played um, me. Okay. We, I seen we fast that. Now, that, Yeah, that's a that's a true story, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's Lisa Brown. That's her. Uh, those those things really happened to her. <laughs> like, I believe it's a good like ninety seven percent accurate to to what happened in her life. But yeah, I had a I had a ball with that. Uh, you know, coming on and 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 becoming Jai, the infamous Jai. 
<laughs> and, and and bringing that character to life, man. And <laughs> it opened up a lot of doors for me, you know, as far as, you know, being the villain or the antagonist, the bad guy, however you want to word it. And, yeah. you know, I had, a, I had a lot of fun with that with that film, man. So, yeah, he played me was definitely is really my favorite out, out of everything that I've done. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and Lisa Brown, that's who does uh, the Dirty mm-hmm. D. Yep. How, how is it working with uh with Lisa Brown? Cause she's uh she's on fire right now. Yeah, I mean Lisa Lisa was cool. You know, um, you know I, I was glad I was able to come in. You know because when she she had the book, it was a book first. He played me, and um, she came in the game, and she actually knows my lady. You know they they go way back. So when this was initially brought to me, um, she came and said, well. Just to give a backstory, my, 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 my lady, she read books. She read tons of books. And okay. um, she had read the book. He played me. And I remember when she was reading it because she was saying to me, like, hey, this book, oh, my God, this this book, it, it's, it's so out cold. My, my homegirl, Lisa, she cold with the pen. She wrote this. and that. She was just really, you know, bragging hard and, and pumping Lisa up to me. I hadn't met her yet. I'm like, okay, man, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. Like, all right, you know, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So she was like, I'm going to talk to her because if she ever making a movie, I'm going to tell her that my, my dude should play the lead character, a job. I'm like, all right, you know, that's cool. Still, I ain't, I ain't thinking nothing of it, man. So she, you know, time go on, maybe a month or two, she said she talked to her and, you know, kind of put the idea up there like, yo, if you ever decide to make this movie, you know, you should have my dude play the role. Da, 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 da. So fast forward some more. And uh, she ended up reaching back out and was saying that she was thinking about doing it but she wanted it to be a YouTube series. So at that time, you know, I hadn't really done a YouTube series. And, and to be honest, bro, it wasn't really something that I wanted to do. Cause I'm like, I'm really more so concentrating on film and, and things of that. So to do, you know, no, no knock on YouTube. I know you can do your thing on YouTube, but that's not something that I just was yeah, gung ho about. Not where you want to go with it. Hey, exactly. But anyway, I was going to do it on the strength of, you know, this is, my my lady's friend and you know i i I just enjoy acting so fast forward some more and um we're we're going out of town uh we're driving to texas from from detroit you know that's a nice little nice little journey so my girl she gave me the book like you might as well read the book yeah you ain't got nothing else to do i'm like all right man so i'm in the car when i tell you man i read that book from front to back in about two hours i couldn't put it down i was just blown away like I see what she's been telling me all of this time, bro. So we fast forward again. I called her right after I read the book and I say, listen, Lisa, uh, I don't know what the budget is like. I don't, I know this is your first whatever, but if you put this on YouTube, it's going to be an extreme injustice. You're going to sell yourself way short. This is a movie. She's like, you really think so? I was like, yes, I've read a hundred scripts. I know fire when I see it. This, this is a movie not made for YouTube. This is a film. Mm-hmm. So she's like, all right, well, let me make a couple of calls and, and I'm going to get back with you. About a month went past. She hit me back and we was greenlit to do. He played me, man. And, and the rest mm. is history. <laughs> That's dope, man. That's yeah. super dope. Right. Yeah. Man. All right. What about uh, Get Paid? Get Paid. Get Paid. That's my homegirl, China. Sarah. Her, her, her real name is Sarah. She goes by China, the main Yeah, character. right. China. I'm um, slated to get home to show I've been talking with her people. Yeah, I mean, get paid was dope. I mean, you see, you see what it was, man. We had a ball uh, with that. You know, we had baby money and that we had skill of baby and that as well. And and we just came together, man. And you know, she wanted the cast to be fresh as hell. That was her thing. You know, she kind of was trying to go, um, not really compete with power, but you know how power you see them, they fresh as hell. But mind you, power got a budget. We don't got power's budget, but you know, we we was trying to get as close to that as, as we could with with the dressing and the, and the jewelry and the clothing and the cars and all of that. But um, I had a lot of fun on get paid playing bigs, man. So that that was a dope film for me too. Okay, okay, and I'll round off this little part of it with nasty, nasty. Shout out to Bria Stevens. That's the homie too. That was her that was first a, movie. That was a, that was a doozy right now. Yeah, man, nasty, nasty. The only thing I, 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 maybe two or three of my scenes got cut in nasty. I don't know why, but it happens. You know, a lot of your yeah. scenes don't make the cut for whatever reason. But um, nasty, I had fun with. And I, <laughs> I tell you a quick tidbit story about nasty too, bro. Um, <laughs> so the scene when I'm in the basement and um, yeah. they got me tied up and dude, he he pissed away with me, right? <laughs> now mind you, we didn't. 
we didn't we didn't rehearse this thing uh, 50 million times and, and you know just in rehearsals table reads and you know even that day getting ready to shoot it we then went over it a hundred times about how when you uh, go swing from here and you go sell it and go this way you're gonna come back you sell and go that way so we we got this down to a t bro so we action we in it you know he doing his thing and i'm i'm selling it and i'm i got the special effects and and we got the going man and he fucked around and hit oh my bad can i cut can i cut yeah you good yeah, you okay good. He, so he fucked around and, and hit me for real bro hit me with the butt of the gun he caught me right here now, mind you, when he hit me, I already was in makeup. So I had the prosthetics on. It was a prosthetic here mm -hmm. and here. And, you know, shout out to uh, Candace. She's the makeup artist. She's a phenomenal talent. She do a lot of the um, Homestead Entertainment uh, special effects and makeup. So she yeah. had me looking real gory and beat up for the scene. And he hit me for real. And the first thing I did, when, as soon as he hit me, you know, I pulled my hands back because I wasn't really tied tight. Mm -hmm. I pulled my hands back and I grabbed my face and you do like this. To see if you bleed mm -hmm. but i already got the prosthetic on so when i pull it back it's just full of blood so i'm like oh shit like i don't know if this is re my real blood or if this is the prosthetic blood but i'm trying not to freak out and i'm trying to stay calm and william shout out to him that's the guy the guy that did it he it was an accident he, he was really apologetic and he's just like man you straight bro i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i had a mild concussion man so they take me to the hospital i leave said they take me to the hospital and when I go in the hospital, man, I, I go in through emergency and, and the emergency is packed with people. <laughs> and they all just looking at me like, like, oh, like, what oh happened my to God, this like, <laughs> like, like they staring at me and they looking. You know how you got to give me information and the lady, yeah. she don't want to act, but she just looking. So I see the doctor and he come in and he looking at me the same way. We just like, listen, it's a movie. It's a special effects. Da, 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 da. So they got the pill and, you know, the prosthetics off. And I had a little bump right here, but it wasn't cut, luckily. And the prosthetic that was already there is really what saved me. So the prosthetic that was here took oh, the blunt of the blow. Man. And that's why I, I wasn't split open. So he told me I had a concussion, told me to go home, get some rest, man. I was in the hospital, maybe four hours, left the hospital, went right back to set, finished out that scene. Action. And then we went, went home about three o'clock in the morning and went to sleep. Oh man, y'all really, y'all really leaving it out on the field. Um, oh yeah. Ebony oh, yeah. Tates told me how she had got hurt. Uh, filming um, a good man, and uh, oh, yeah? and, and, want, and wanted to keep uh, wanted to keep going. They were like, "No, we are gonna go to the hospital mm -hmm. and get straight, you know, so we can make sure everything is good." Yeah, man, we 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 work around here, man. We 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 go around here. Yeah, man. Before I let you go, a couple more things. Now, you, I heard you mention your lady. I asked uh, King Wesley about this. Um, how does uh? Speak a little bit on on that dynamic, man, of of how with everything you have to do in acting, and you might have to do a role with another woman or something like that. How you keep mm -hmm. how you keep the house good? Listen, man, I just when I get the script, I read it, I go through it. If I see a sex scene coming, I let her know. Hey, this this I got a scene in this. Uh, she always wants to know how we're gonna shoot it, and I always tell her like I don't know, like we don't know how we're gonna shoot it. Yeah. That's just something that you, when we're on set. Or, uh, you know, even even in rehearsals, they don't really know. It just depends on the set where we are and, and how they think they can come to life. So it's kind of on the fly, mm -hmm. you know, but I just tell her, like, listen, I got a scene. And, you know, this is what it, it this is what it says here on paper. And, and we do it. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, I keep her confident. She don't have to worry about me trying to, you know, double back or, or none of that. And, and, and we keep it moving. So it's it's no issue. She, she don't want me to be uh, like asshole naked out here. But. You know, for the most part, she she trusts me. It's it's no problems. She hey, did it. Y'all do a good job because you see every every at least once a week a post come up like, man, I think they doing it for real, man. I seen man. uh I seen every Makiva, other day. Makiva and Elizabeth Fox went live on IG. I think a week or so oh, yeah? ago and had a whole that. conversation about this. Like, look, we are not having sex for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we try to, but that that's that be the thing, though, bro. Like, if we're gonna do this. Let's make it look as real as possible. That's the whole yeah. point. Because the last thing you want to do is be in a sex scene and people looking at that like, look at this. This don't even look real. Like, you don't want that. You want people to be like, damn, is they really for real? Like, because it looked like that's that's the whole point. So if people thinking that, then we doing what we need to do. Yep. And so, again, y'all don't breeze past that, fellas. This, in, any, in any industry, man, these guys that have wives and special women in their life, the, the, the common denominator is keeping them informed, 
communication, keeping them confident, and, and ensuring the trust so that they can support them back. Ain't nobody sneaking around or nothing like that. You can't just Definitely. expect them to just go with it. Definitely. So, and then once I once we're done, I get the scenes first before, you know, obviously before everybody. So they always send the scene to me. And I'll be mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, this is cool. And I'm, and she sees it. So by the time everybody else sees it, we didn't already saw it a million times. So we good with it. Okay. All right. This is something, this something I ask everybody. All right. You're about to star in a Hollywood film. Two mm -hmm. movies. You're going to mm -hmm. co-star. One movie you're going to co-star with another male. The other movie you're going to co-star with another female. Who do you want them to be? Denzel Washington. Okay. And I'm going to have a 1A and a 1B. I'm going Viola Davis, and I'm going Angela Bassett. Oh, the movie, the movie with you and Denzel, what, what that's about? You know, it's going to be an action drama. You know, I'm thinking something like uh, like an equalizer, but okay. I'm the guy that's helping him because he's getting in over his head. You know, he's getting a little older. You know, we know that's Denzel. We know we know what he do out here. We ain't we ain't, we ain't contesting that, but you know, mm -hmm. life is life. So he getting a little older, so he might need a little assistance. So I'd be the guy to, to you know to have his back for him. But okay. he's still the guy. He's still the guy. He's the man. I'm just coming in making sure he good, you know. Yeah, just making sure. <clears throat> hey, don't it's a part of right there, don't slip and fall. Just make sure yeah. you straight. And yeah. what and what you doing with the ladies? I mean, with the ladies, man, we we're gonna do some drama. Um I'm thinking like some lawyer type stuff. You know, I'm a lawyer against one of them. You know, they the hot shot lawyer and I'm representing and, you know, it's it's all type of twists and turns that connect. So, you know, either one of them, you can slide either one of them in that yeah, I think somebody did, but y'all, y'all great minds think alike. I think somebody else just said the same thing in that really? scenario. I think it was Wes. I think he did, a, um, it was him and Regina King or Regina Hall. And he said okay. he wanted to do Lawyers, he was gonna prosecute a uh, opposing opposing counsel. Yeah, yep. yeah. You know, King, my guy. I've been knowing King since we was kids. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. We go, we go back before this acting stuff. Man, I've been knowing King since we was 16, 11 years old. Dope, man. Dope. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love what y'all got going on. Okay. Um, you get to, you get to remake any movie you want to. What movie you gonna remake and who you gonna cast in it? I get to remake any movie I want them to do. Yep. <clears throat> and who am I gonna cast? Yep. Listen, I'm gonna do. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do Superman, and I'll play Superman. Mm. Be the first black Superman. Okay. That's what I do. E right. Any one of them. Superman and I and I want to play him. That's different, now. Nah. Yeah. That's different. Now nah, it's too many characters that we ain't even got to go deep, deep, dig right. deep into that. Just tell me who's gonna be Lois Lane. Who is my Lois Lane? Mm-hmm. I'm going Zoe Saldana. Love Zoe. Okay. okay. I can see her working at okay. the Daily Planet, you know. Playing that role of Lois Lane. Oh man, that okay. I, the answers to these mm -hmm. questions are always interesting. Everybody, and that's how I know that y'all really, you know, are into your craft because it's never nothing cliche or normal. You know, mm -hmm. nobody wants to remake Boys in the Hood and nothing like that. No, it's always no. a curveball. You're gonna yeah. be the first black Superman, and Zoe Saldana is gonna be Lois Lane. I love. It. I can, I can see that. All yeah. right, man. Before we get out of here, let everybody know you know all your social media handles and contacts and how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, man. On Instagram, it's Mr. Amazing One. It's M R dot A M A Z N one. Uh, if you get me on Facebook, it's my first and last name, Alfonso Settle. A L P H O N S O S E T T L E S. Hey, you heard? Y'all go check them out, follow them, friend them, whatever on social media. Type his name in Tubi, watch all his movies. Type his name in Google, check out his IMDb. Go watch all his movies, man. Everything is good quality, amazing actor. I'm rocking with him, man. Hey, I Thank appreciate you, you. Appreciate you taking time to stop.
about a smoke screen, man. And hey, this was another exclusive. Y'all stay tuned in, and we are out. All right, man. Thanks for having me, bro.